There's a lot of those creepy little bugs in here that like the ironwood beans. Well, I'm about to see what happens when I leave acacia beans and um, mesquite pods in a slow cooker for about nine or ten hours. I have no idea. So this is been in the crock pot for nine and a half hours. Smells interesting. The acacia has gotten bigger, kind of swelled just like beans. I'm assuming that's what's turned the water brown, just like beans would. So that's an acacia bean. Mmm, really uh, tender. It's very easy to eat. These mesquite pods, I have no idea. This is going to be so strange. The um, outer pod is pretty stringy. So, yeah, okay. This is kind of making sense. This is uh, one of the strangest brunches I've ever had in my life, I think, right now. <clears throat> it would be much improved <clears throat> with that goldenrod tea. <laughs> Goldenrod tea is really good, uh, not only dried, but also just green and fresh. If you just pick the flowers and cut them up into little pieces and make your tea out of them that way, <clears throat> the difference really between a dried tea and a fresh tea is that the dried tea is going to have more um, useful medicinal purposes because by drying the leaves and the flowers the <coughs> elements in the leaf that you want for medicine will break loose from the cells of, of the leaf and get into the water and then when you drink the water you're actually drinking the medicine instead of just drinking the flavor for a sweetener, I'm going to use coconut sugar, which comes from the flower buds of a coconut tree. And we're set. So I've made a discovery. If you take one of these pods, and just chew it up and swallow whatever comes out of it and then spit out the stuff that you can't chew. What you have is a little lump of something that looks a little bit like that Sasquatch poo, so you probably shouldn't look at it. And now fresh goldenrod tea from the mountains. This would taste much better with rattlesnake or scorpion or something. So anyway, goldenrod has, oh, I don't know, a thousand uses. 
one of the uses for goldenrod tea is actually to help dissolve stones in the bladder. Uh, also, it's useful for colds from tuberculosis and hay fever. Uh, it's also useful for mixing with other herbs that have a really bad flavor. It kind of overpowers them and makes the nasty flavor more tolerable. Uh, Indians used to uh, use a solution from boiled leaves uh, as a, a lotion for wounds, ulcers. They would sprinkle uh, part, uh, powdered leaves uh, onto wounds as a dressing. It was used for saddle sores on horses. It's used for uh, sickness from a weak stomach, so I guess if you're feeling nauseous and you're gonna puke, goldenrod tea helps. It promotes perspiration. So if you're if you need to kind of detox your body and you're having a hard time sweating, goldenrod tea is good for that. Wounds that uh, are taking a long time to heal. If you're having a hard time healing wounds, uh, you would make a powder from the flowers, which when I made my tea, I put the flowers and the leaves in the tea. But uh, the powdered flowers can be used as a treatment on wounds that aren't healing. And that information is from Indian Herbology of North America by Alma Hutchins. So, yeah. Anyway, all right, I'm back out where I was and uh, eating the mesquite pods raw like the uh, Mr. Donkey and Mr. Sasquatch. Miss Sasquatch. I'm gonna be optimistic and pretend there's a Miss Sasquatch out there for me. I can see the point. Okay, I do understand what my Sasquatch girlfriend is doing. Um, take it raw, chew it up, you get everything that's inside of it. All that's left is some stringy stuff you can't chew. So the Sasquatch just swallows that. I'm a lot more inclined to spit it out. I guess maybe it doesn't matter which one you do. The flavor, raw, it has a really, now this is, would be velvet mesquite. It's got a really strange, um, I don't know, lemon sweet tart taste in the part of the, the pod that's encasing the seed. You chew the seed, the, the um, pea just kind of pops out of your mouth. So there's just some, some fiber and stuff that you can't chew that's left. So the wild people who don't know how to cook or build fires seem to, uh, to prefer that method. Alright, let's talk about this plant. It's Senna. The species is probably Cassia Coves C, um, which is desert Senna. In this state, uh, these green pods, especially just like this, are a laxative. Uh, the leaves also, but the leaves are more likely to cause, uh, you know, they're a little rougher. The best part of it is the, the seed pods, just like this. <clears throat> you make a tea out of it, and it's a really, really excellent medicinal laxative. So you don't want to make a tea out of those unless you plan to get the runs. In this state, 
with the pods that are all dried out, it's not really so useful as a laxative. Uh, actually, <coughs> the pods have a very uh, limited use for that <coughs> reason, but the seeds inside the pods have almost no laxative qualities when they're dried out like this at the end of the plant's life. So, I have found no information about these seeds beyond that. So I'm doing what I do. I'm being the guinea pig for you all and experimenting with these seeds as a food source. And um, they're crunchy, don't have very much flavor. Um, there's a slight bitter flavor after you've chewed it up. It's not known to be toxic. Uh, it's not gonna give you the squirts. So this is one of those plants I'm in the middle of experimenting with just for you. Well, really for me, I'm just letting you watch. We have sacred datura, jimson weed. It depends on the species, what they call it. it has relatively the same uses for medicine. It's a painkiller, among other things. Uh, the leaves. It's actually a very strong painkiller. So if your aspirin from the inner bark of a willow or, or from a cottonwood or, or if you've made a poultice from cottonwood leaves and it's not doing the thing, you can use sacred datura for the same thing. You make a poultice out of that, although I wouldn't recommend a spit poultice. I wouldn't chew it up. And I wouldn't apply it directly to a wound. I would um, put some something between the wound and the leaf. But um, anyway, it's very useful for that fillery. There's a lot of that around here. There you go. So... These will get a lot bigger with time, but the little sprinkling of rain in the summer uh, has got the fillery growing a little bit. You take the whole thing, the leaves, the roots, so you can get a spade and dig it out of the ground if you want. And it has, oh, I don't know, a thousand uses. It was imported, I guess, accidentally from Europe. Um, but... It is useful for a sore throat as a gargle. So you can make a tea and gargle it. It's also useful for uh, rashes and burns, including sunburn. Um, also, uh, externally and internally, it's a mild astringent. It can help with uh, menstrual heavy bleeding and it's also soothing to the urinary tract. So if it hurts to pee, a, uh, a tea made out of fillery will help, may help uh, with the it hurts to pee problem. Another use for datura is you can dry the leaves, and smoke them, roll them up in a smoke, and uh, use that for bronchial constriction from asthma or from allergies to pollens or insect stings. And uh, I don't know, it's, a, it's another panacea with a thousand uses. Pretty much just about everything is. So this would be crown beard. Golden crown beard has a very strong odor. If you rub it with your hand, it will just, it's, uh, it's, it's a good smell. It's a strong smell. You can use it uh, externally, uh, either again as, a, as an infusion, like a tea, and you, you use it as a wash to reduce swelling from injuries, cuts, scrapes, bruises. Um, you can also, I'm sure, use, uh, use it as a, uh, as a poultice as well. Also, you can use it for chicken pox, shingles, 
herpes cold sores, you know, cold sore on your lips, it works for that. You can use it in combination with tree tobacco and Datura for uh, hemorrhoid flare-ups. Again, the list goes on and on and on. It's probably a good idea to know the one or two best uses for each plant that's in your area that's really common. In other words, uh, this plant is the most effective plant for this. Uh, so that you don't have to memorize a thousand uses for each plant because it gets really confusing and I constantly have to look at my books and notes and whatever because everything does so many different things. Uh, probably the best way to remember things is to view, you know, to look at a plant like that and go, okay, that's for herpes cold sores uh, and, you know, whatever. Chaparral may be a better one for that, like herpes cold sores, or uh, also for sunburn, just and only because it's more common and easier to find everywhere um, in this area of the desert. But anyway, uh, if you know the two best things that a specific plant does, and then you know you have some alternates too, in case you can't find that. And of course, different plants are just different seasons, like your crown beard and your fillery. You know, these and this uh, flower that I'm about to show you are growing right now at the end of the summer in the fall. I mean, it's, I don't know, technically fall. It's, you know, November. Uh, because of the very light sprinkling of summer rains, so at different times of the year there will be different things, and it's good, and again, at different altitudes. So you kind of have to know your area and focus on a couple plant, you know, on, on a couple uses for each plant, uh, but to have good notes for all the other uses too. And one final herb is chinchweed. This is a little tiny bush. It's a remedy for hiccups. I don't think we've mentioned anything for hiccups yet. It may help with stomach cramps and uh, reduce diarrhea that's associated with the stomach cramps. Several teaspoons of the tea will work, uh, may work for colicky babies. So to make a tea, an infusion from this, you just take the whole plant, including the roots, dig it out with a spade, turn the whole thing into a tea. Also, it's a seasoning for food. And the Hopi uh, used to use it as a dye, maybe they still do. The Zuni used to rub it on themselves as like a perfume or a cologne. I can see why. It does smell like perfume. Mmm. Mm. Wow, that smells really good. <laughs> yeah. See, you can live out in the wilderness and not smell like a stinky unbathed hippie. <laughs> As a seasoning in foods. Wow. Wow, it's very, very sharp, so it has to be crushed up really small, you know, and sprinkled lightly. And it's it's powerful, really powerful. I can I can imagine. It's amazing. <laughs>